This video is sponsored by Enron. Learn more about Enron's new malware analysis training program in a few moments. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to guide you through the process of becoming a cybersecurity engineer with a special focus on defensive security operations engineering, which includes high demand roles like threat detection and incident response. These roles are crucial in defending organizations from cyber threats and are not only highly technical, but also among the most demanded and well compensated in the cybersecurity field. Now, I know what you're thinking. This this video is titled the fastest way to become a cybersecurity engineer but this is absolutely not one of those videos that will tell you how to get into cybersecurity in 30 60 or even 90 days my goal here is to break things down for you in a way that allows you to be efficient in your career journey as an entry-level cybersecurity candidate what i've learned from helping people on the channel as well as in the discord community is that everyone's fast is different but if you're willing to apply what I give you in this video, then you can define for yourself what FAST means for your career. That being said, if you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a security engineer at Amazon with a current focus in incident response engineering. In the past, I've worked as a detection engineer at Datadog where I was focused on cloud, network, endpoints, and sets applications. And I've also previously worked as a tier one slash tier two analyst at various SOX and MDRs. With all of this experience, what I'm gonna do in this video is give you a step-by-step -step roadmap to get you to become a cybersecurity engineer even if you don't have a degree or any technical knowledge yet as a matter of fact this video has no college education requirements or advice at all i personally was able to break into cybersecurity as early as my freshman year of college and i've gotten several jobs and job interviews prior to ever having a college degree and I've also helped thousands of people do the same thing on this channel and in my Discord community. And before we get deeper into the video, I want to invite you to join our Discord community, Cyborgs Academy. We have almost 4,000 people in there, and we're having conversations and helping each other all the time. Everything from general technical cybersecurity conversations to conversations about college, certifications, resume help, and other non-professional things like fitness, finance, anime, and other cool things like that. It'll be linked in the description. Now, when you're getting started on your journey to become a security engineer, this journey can start from various points, whether you're currently in an IT role, such as a network engineer or a systems administrator role, or even in a security role like a SOC analyst, or in some cases entirely outside of the tech industry, such as nursing or working in retail. The critical first step you need to take is understanding the fundamental concepts of cybersecurity, which will form the backbone of your skills and expertise in threat detection or incident response. As part of improving and building your threat detection or incident response skills, Skills, you may be wondering how to develop your malware analysis skills as well. Well, Anyron has just developed a new malware analysis program designed for complete beginners interested in analyzing malware and building the skills around that. Inside this program, you will learn the basic foundations through both static and dynamic analysis. You will study malware's core functionalities, its behaviors, defense evasion techniques, and the tools available to help you conduct successful malware analysis. Through hands-on experience with real simulations, and interactive exercises. You will not just be reading about malware analysis, you will actually be performing real-world analysis on actual malware variants. And for students and instructors at universities, the program offers an extensive LMS integration that fits seamlessly into your learning curriculum so that you can teach your students malware analysis skills and prepare them for real-world scenarios they might face in cybersecurity roles that require them to analyze malware. And this blog on the screen contains all the details related to this course and you'll find it linked in the description as well. I personally recommend any runs malware analysis program because it introduces foundational concepts while providing an interactive learning experience through tests hands-on assignments, and on-demand documentation. This program is perfect for individuals, universities, individual researchers, and corporate teams looking to expand their malware analysis skills. Additionally, anyone has been a leader in malware analysis for several years now, and they've encountered countless malware variants and developed a robust platform trusted by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cybersecurity professionals, companies, and independent researchers to protect their organizations daily. I've actually even made a video and entirely around using any run for malware analysis of the Redline InfoStealer. I'll leave it somewhere on the screen or in the description below. So if you're interested in developing your malware analysis skills, I recommend checking out Anyron's program. Use the link in the description below to contact the Anyron team and they'll send you a link and invite to explore the program. 
Thanks to anyone for sponsoring today's video. Now, in order to build a strong foundation in cybersecurity, I personally recommend pursuing certifications and training that provide a blend of theoretical knowledge and practical experience. I recommend that you opt for industry recognized training like the Google Cybersecurity Training or the Microsoft Cybersecurity Analyst Training. These trainings and programs are specifically designed to equip you with the essential skills and they also include hands-on labs, which are crucial for grasping the intricacies of security operations. Now, if you've been subscribed for a while, you know I'm a big advocate of hands-on lab because the great thing about these hands-on lab is you get to practice what you learn. So things make a lot more sense when you're using those skills in the real world as a cybersecurity engineer or even during interviews where you're asked to talk about them. The Google cybersecurity training includes labs that teach you skills like Linux, which is a core skill for any cybersecurity engineer, MySQL, which will help you in understanding the basics of data analytics, and of course, Python, which will be super important for scripting and automation. More on this later in the video. Now, I also like that this specific Google program gets you ready for the CompTIA Security Plus, which is generally a staple foundational certification in the security industry. Now, on the other hand, the Microsoft Cybersecurity Analyst Training will introduce you to the Microsoft Azure Cloud and the Microsoft Sentinel platform. This is great because you get an introduction to a top cloud provider, and on the other hand, a top SIM or security information and event management. This program also prepares you for the Microsoft Security Operations Analyst certification, which is also another great certification. Now, with the cybersecurity and other fundamentals aside, there's another foundational skill that you need to give significant consideration. This particular skill should never be overlooked if you want to become a proficient and effective cybersecurity engineer, and that skill is an understanding of computer networking. This skill is integral to the cybersecurity field as it provides the necessary knowledge to comprehend how data moves and communicates across different systems. You need to understand the basics of IP addressing, public and private IP addresses, network address translation or NAT, site notation, routing, network ports and protocols like HTTP, DNS, SSH, LDAP, and so on. In addition to all of this, you also need to know the basics of network types and topologies like peer-to-peer -peer networks, client-to-server networks, local area networks or LANs, wide area networks or WANs, and so on. All of these can be learned from a good CompTIA Network Plus course like the one from Professor Messer here on YouTube or paid ones on Udemy from Jason Dion. Also, the earlier training and programs are mentioned from Google and Microsoft also cover some very fundamental networking concepts. So those are also good places to start as well. Now, I tell people this all the time, you don't necessarily have to take this certification but the knowledge you will gain from understanding how networks work from the CompTIA Network Plus will be extremely invaluable to your cybersecurity career. In my personal experience, I've landed several jobs, including my current job, just because of how I showed my strong understanding of networking during my interviews. Do not overlook this skill at all. Heck, dare I say you cannot become a competent cybersecurity engineer without understanding the basics of computer networking. Now, let's talk about specializing in threat detection engineering or incident response engineering. If your career interest lies in any of these roles, you will typically be told that it's super important to become proficient in using monitoring and detection tools like Splunk or CrowdStrike. And while I think that is somewhat right, it's a half-truth. Every single monitoring tool or detection tool is built on the foundation of the native telemetry that is already provided by the system, be it cloud or Linux or Windows, whatever the case is. If you do not understand how these systems work fundamentally or the threats against them, it doesn't matter how great you are at Splunk, you will never be able to detect anything. And this is exactly why I recommended that you learn how systems work or networks work before trying to learn how to detect threats against them. Let me give you a real life example of why this is very important. When I first got my last job at Datadog, I was very new to the cloud. I had never done anything cloud detection engineering wise, but I had worked on some cloud security investigations in my previous role as a SOC analyst. One of the first main projects I had as an engineer back then was expanding our detection rule set for Google Cloud, but I had never worked with Google Cloud in my entire life. So what did I do? I dove into the documentation of Google Cloud in order to learn how IAM works in it, how the projects and organizations work, how resources are configured, how service accounts and several other things like that worked within this environment, specifically Google Cloud in general. Now, how did all of that help me? In a matter of weeks, I was able to start building and testing out detections for Google Cloud. Also, 
I co-wrote an article on Google Cloud Threat Detection and even gave multiple talks on Google Cloud Threat Detection, coming from someone who never had any knowledge of Google Cloud prior to that. The moral of this story here is replace Google Cloud with anything here. It could be Linux, it could be Windows, IoT, heck, it could be iPhones or Androids. The point I'm trying to get across is you need to understand the system, its intended use, and its weaknesses before you can actually detect any threats against it. Only after this should you start learning tools like Splunk or CrowdStrike. The great thing about Splunk is that they offer some free training that can take you from knowing nothing about Splunk to becoming pretty decent at Splunk. Alternatively, you can also go through various Try Hack Me rooms that can help you on Splunk and investigating with Splunk or even deploy your own Splunk instance and ingest logs into it like I've outlined in my Cybersecurity Home Lab project linked in the description. I've also made several videos on this which you can find in my SecOps and Investigations playlist which I'll leave somewhere here on the screen. But also Ultimately, a combination of both strong system and network understanding as well as Splunk engineering or sim engineering will make you a very hireable detection engineer, very hireable for threat detection roles. And the same thing applies to incident response. This specialization requires a thorough understanding of response processes and recovery strategies and learning to manage and respond to security incidents effectively. But ultimately, you still need to understand the underlying system in order to respond to threats accordingly. Now you may ask, how do you begin to build the course skills for these roles. This in and of itself is a whole video which I've done covering several trainings, certifications, and courses to consider for various skills you might be looking to learn in order to build a cybersecurity engineering career. I covered several training providers and courses and platforms like Constructing Defense, 13 Cube, TCM Security, Purple Lab, Zentra, and several others. I highly suggest watching that video. I'll leave it somewhere on the screen. Now, let's talk about practice and labbing. Mastering the tools and specific skills to your chosen specialization, whether it's threat detection detection systems like SIMs for detecting attacks or is the response techniques for mitigating these attacks is extremely crucial. Each and every tool or technique you might learn requires a deep understanding of specific aspects of cybersecurity such as network traffic analysis or log analysis for threat detection or forensics and crisis management for incident response. So here are some platforms that I also covered in that video I mentioned earlier on that you can use to help practice these skills. These platforms include Ace Defender, Blue Team Labs Online by Security Blue Team, Try Hack Me, Pwned Labs, Hack the Box Sherlock's, Let's Defend, Cyber Defenders, Range Force, and several others. Again, they're covered in that video, which I already linked previously in the video. Applying your knowledge through these real-world simulations and practical labs is essential. Due to varying complexities, I recommend starting with foundational training on platforms like TryHackMe, which cover everything from basic security principles to complex systems and application security tasks. Then, from there, advance to more specialized models that focus on the intricacies of network and system security, malware analysis, log analysis, instant response, instant management, and so on. The next thing you need to build on is your scripting and automation skills. There are several people out there that will tell you that you don't need to learn how to code or script in order to gain to cybersecurity or have a successful career here. I'm here to tell you that that is a big lie. As the industry advances, these skills are going to become more and more important. And as a matter of fact, in threat detection and incident response, having scripting and automation skills is going to be very important. Otherwise, you're going to be a drag to your team and your career will actually stagnate. I'm saying this because you will need to automate redundant processes or make things more efficient and scripting helps with this. One of the best languages to start with is Python due to its simplicity and its powerful capabilities. As a matter of fact, over the last six or so months, I've been spending all my free time building my Python skills and posting some tutorials on this channel which can be found in my Python playlist linked in the description. Python is widely used in cybersecurity for automating repetitive tasks, parsing large amounts of data, and also developing simple software tools. With Python, you can automate the boring and repetitive stuff and focus more on the strategic aspects of your job, such as the actual threat analysis and the actual incident response. Starting with the basics, there are many online resources available to learn Python. I personally recommend Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, as well as Code with Mosh's Python course. However, if you're looking for other platforms, Code Academy, Coursera, and edX offer beginner-friendly courses that also teach you the fundamentals of Python programming. The key thing here is to pick a course and stick with it long enough to build your Python skills. Once you have a good grasp of the basics, you can start exploring various modules and libraries specifically used in cybersecurity such as Scappy for network analysis, Pandas for data analysis, JSON for parsing JSON files, requests for making web requests, or Beautiful Soup for web scraping. Also, various platforms provide cybersecurity focused Python challenges that allow you to apply your newly acquired skills in practical scenarios. 
For example, Hacking Science's Python Challenges or Programming Heroes 100 Plus Python Coding Challenges are great resources to learn and practice Python in a cybersecurity context. Now, I want you to remember this. The goal is not to become a software developer, but rather to use Python as a tool to enhance your threat detection and incident response capabilities. Therefore, I recommend that you focus on practical applications of Python in cybersecurity, such as automating data analysis, building simple tools, or integrating different security solutions using APIs. Some other languages to consider will be Golang and JavaScript as they also help in various cybersecurity automation and integration workflows. For more operating system level scripting, I recommend PowerShell for Windows and Bash for Linux. In addition to learning a programming language, Understanding cloud and infrastructure as code are crucial auxiliary skills for cybersecurity engineers focused on threat detection or incident response. These days, cloud knowledge is essential because many organizations are shifting their operations and data storage to cloud-based solutions. Therefore, you will need to learn how to deploy and build security tools in the cloud, secure cloud-based infrastructure, how data flow is managed in the cloud, and how access control works in a cloud environment. You want to learn how to be familiar with various cloud platforms like AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure. You don't have to learn all of them, just pick one and get good at it. And if your job or personal project requires you learning another one, then go for it. Learning Cloud is a video on its own that I've already done. If you want to become a cloud security engineer, I'll leave a link to that video somewhere on the screen, but that's not the exact focus on this video. This video is focused on threat detection and incident response. But like I said, learning Cloud is going to be an extremely crucial auxiliary skill. In addition to this, infrastructure as code is a key concept in modern IT operations. It involves managing and provisioning computing infrastructure through machine-readable scripts rather than manual click-ops processes. So for a cybersecurity engineer, understanding infrastructure as code can help in automating security controls and policies. It would allow you to efficiently deploy security systems that are more manageable and scalable. And some tools, platforms, languages that are used for infrastructure as code are CloudFormation for AWS, uh, Bicep, I believe, for Azure, Terraform, which is agnostic, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and many others. These ones are typically easier to pick up as they're more declarative languages, so learning one may actually help in ramping up with the other ones. All right, so in order to bring everything together, working on a few personal projects relating to cybersecurity can be an excellent way to actually strengthen and solidify these skills. These projects can involve utilizing a range of tools such as a sim, cloud technologies, Python programming, and infrastructure as code. By actively working on and building out these projects, you're going to be able to gain your own personal hands-on experience and a deeper understanding of the intricacies involved in these various cybersecurity tools and systems and how they work together in enterprise environments. Furthermore, these projects can actually serve as tangible evidence of your skills and your knowledge which can be outlined on your resume and this not only enhances your professional profile but it also provides you with a concrete example or concrete examples and experiences to draw upon during interviews i've had several situations where i've talked about my personal projects during my interviews and i've actually had the interviewer pull up those projects because i listed them on my resume and linked to them this is a chico for interviewing it could ultimately steer the interview in a direction that actually favors you because of your projects ultimately these personal projects can significantly boost your confidence and competence as a cybersecurity engineer. Now, once you've established a solid foundation and gained some hands-on experience, it's time to choose a specific pathway within security operations engineering. Whether you decide to focus on threat detection or incident response, your path I personally believe should be guided by both your interests as well as the specific needs of the job market at the time you're looking for a job. Bear in mind that cybersecurity is a field defined by rapid evolution and constant change. Ensuring your continuous professional development through ongoing education, labbing, staying updated on the latest threats, and continually refining your practical skills are going to be necessary for your growth as a cybersecurity engineer. This video will not be complete without me sharing a breakdown of all the various training providers I mentioned earlier. So. If you want a more in-depth video on that, then check out this video. Otherwise, feel free to check out this playlist of mine where I document my personal engineering diary, which chronicles everything cybersecurity engineering in relation to my career. I'll see you over there.